I'll tell you what, let's get off this planet for a bit. But before we do, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below. In this video, I'll be looking at the extreme exoplanet called Korot 7b. So, time once again to grab your towel and join me as we go exploring the universe. Let's go. Lying 489 light years away, we find the star Korot 7. This is a G-type main sequence star, similar but a little bit smaller and dimmer than our own Sun. It's an orange star with a surface temperature of between 3500 and 5000 degrees Celsius. Orbiting Korot 7 are possibly three planets, but I want to concentrate on the innermost planet, that's Korot 7b. This is likely to be a terrestrial planet, similar to Earth, but larger. Korot 7b has a diameter 1.68 times that of the Earth, and a mass somewhere between 2 and 8 times that of the Earth. Really though? That's where any similarities with the Earth end. Korot 7b is a cruel world. The planet lies just 2.57 million kilometres from its star, and as a result, it orbits in just 20 and a half hours. Due to its extreme closeness to the star, the planet has temperatures between 1000 and 1500 degrees C, and it's also likely to be tidally locked, with one side permanently facing the star. These extreme temperatures could well lead to the formation of oceans, but not oceans of water, these would be oceans of lava. In fact, it's proposed that these planets be termed lava ocean planets. And these oceans would occur on the permanently star-facing side. On the night side, temperatures may plummet drastically, since there doesn't appear to be much of an atmosphere to transmit any heat from the hot side to the rest of the planet. The Terminator, the permanent twilight area of the planet, may have a mixture of solid ground and lava pools. Some scientists believe that Korot 7b is a Chthonian planet. These are planets similar to Neptune that, due to their proximity to a star, have had their hydrogen and helium atmosphere blown away by solar winds, leaving only the rocky core. In fact, Korot 7b was the first such potentially Chthonian planet to be discovered. Other scientists dispute that this is a Chthonian planet and suggest that it has always been just a rocky planet and cite the young age of the star of evidence for this, and say that not enough time has passed for a gas giant to lose all of its atmosphere. This means then that there's little chance of this planet having any atmosphere, which would have been blown away by the nearby star. Well that's not strictly true, but any atmosphere there is, is likely to be very thin, only about 1% as thick as the atmosphere here on Earth, and also the atmosphere will be formed from vaporised rock. It would consist mainly of sodium, oxygen, silicon monoxide and other metals. On the planet's day side, these metals could rain out of the atmosphere as minerals. Alternatively, some of the metals, such as iron and titanium, could be transported to the night side of the planet before falling as rain. However, we have searched for such an atmosphere by looking at the planet as it passes in front of its star, and as yet have failed to find such an atmosphere, so this is conjecture at present. There is possibly another planet, well, maybe even a further two in this system. Korot 7c lies 6,900,000 kilometres away from the star, and it orbits around the star in a positively sedentary time of 89 hours. This is interesting because its mass has been estimated to be anywhere between 8.4 and 13.5 Earth masses, and this puts Korot 7c right on the boundary between it being a super-Earth and a mini-Neptune-like planet. If it does exist, then gravitational forces between it and the star, and the eccentricity of the planet's orbit, and that's how much it deviates from a perfect circle, could stretch and pull Korot 7b, leading to massive volcanic activity, similar to that on Jupiter's moon Io. Both 7b and 7c lie well outside the Goldilocks zone for this star, but our search for planets continues, and as we find more and more planets out there, we learn more and more about this strange and wonderful universe that we live in. For now, however, it's time to return back to Earth, and until the next time we go exploring the universe, thank you for watching.